Hey everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here with another artist series. It's been a while, a lot of people have been asking me when my next one was going to come out, and uh, I've sort of been dragging my feet a little bit because I've been doing other kinds of videos, but uh, I was real excited to do this one. This one's on Greta Van Fleet's guitarist Jay Kiska, and I remember a long time ago my student came in and he kept telling me about this band, Greta Van Fleet, you gotta check them out, Mike. And uh, for some reason I thought it was a boy band or something, so I kept putting it off, and then finally I broke down and listened to them and I love them right away, and I was like, okay, I really want to dive deeper into Jake's playing because I love how it's a mix of his own stuff mixed with a lot of classic rock influence. And that's a lot like how I play. You know, I have a little more metal in what I do, but I thought, man, I really like what he's doing. I'm connecting with it, and uh, I want to learn more about it. So if you watch the band play live, you'll notice that Jake carries a lot of weight in the band. He has to play the rhythms and the leads on the guitar. It's nice to have another guitarist in the band because they can take some of that weight off of you, but when you have to do it all yourself, you kind of have to learn some tricks to make it work. Check out the beginning of Safari Song. <laughs> Also in this example, so in the studio I know he recorded these parts separately. But like I said, live you have to suddenly put them together and there's a whole art to doing that. One thing that he does a lot that I think adds a lot to solos, the first time I heard this was with Angus Young when I was younger. Uh, it's going from minor to major pentatonic within the same solo. So let's say we're in A, and you're doing some A minor pentatonic licks. Well, once you get to this nice little shape here, I call it the Angus Young or the Billy Gibbon shape, uh, we can move it up two frets and suddenly we find ourselves in the major world. So here. There's that shape, now watch this. All I did was I moved up two frets and now I'm in A major pentatonic. Isn't that a great sound to go between the two? Now if I want to go back to minor, play around with that, you get a lot of mileage out of it. Because I began on drums, I always feel like I have a decent sense of rhythm when I strum, and you could tell that Jake does as well, because his hand just constantly moves. If you ever saw my video on putting an egg shaker in your hand as you play to kind of get that feel going, uh, that's what he is a master of doing. So I'll play a few examples of how he plays what I call slow funk strumming. See how the hand keeps moving for the most part? Here's another example. There's a term called melodic borrowing, and I think it's a great technique to utilize in your solos. If you think of Clapton during Sunshine of Your Love, I swear he uses the beginning of the melody from Blue Moon. The whole. Now what that does is it kind of hijacks your ear because it's familiar and it kind of forces you to listen to the rest of the solo. It's a great little trick. Now I don't know if that's what Jake intended for this part, but if you think of part of No Quarter, I actually hear this melody in a few of his solos. So he might go, or he might do something like, now whether he intended that or not, it really doesn't matter because it made me pay attention all of a sudden, and like I said, it kind of hijacked my ear for the rest of the solo. If you start to play sixth intervals, which are one of my favorite things to do, you know, for a while I was in a blues rock and country band, and a lot of the times if, let's say, we're in A, I would find myself just naturally going It's a cool sound. But what Jake does, and I really like this, is he does a little hammer-on pull-off to it. Isn't that a great sound, that flutter? So you can add that to both rhythms and leads, it works in both situations. I remember trying to figure out the riff to highway tune for my student right off the bat, and the problem I had was I thought it was open tuning, because he does this really cool technique where he goes... So I thought that has to be an open tuning with like a slide. So doing these little quick bends actually emulates an open tuned guitar with a slide going on. So here's what I mean. Pretend this is open tuned, it's not, but I hear you hear this a lot when you hear slide players. 
that sort of sound, and these quick bends emulate that. <laughs> Here's something I'd love to do. I call them Hendrix flutters, and he uses them really well in the same song. Basically going up to B using the thumb. Instead of just playing the straight chord, what you could do is you could take your pinky and use it to do flutter notes like this. And he does it really well within the context of the song. Now, what's great about this chord shape with your thumb is that your pinky's free to do actually three different things typically. So you could play the ninth interval, the sixth, or the fourth, which will just be the sus chord sound. Like, kind of like the who. Just try to use your pinky for those three intervals and you get some great sounds. Here's a great way to fill space. It's the country bend. And harmonically, it just takes up a lot of room in the mix. And so if you want to sound huge, add these. Now here's how you do it. If you're playing, for example, the chords D major to E major, what I like to do, let's say the band's going like. When the D is being played, I always visualize the D here on the sixth string, and I picture the major pentatonic scale. Now what I like to do is I like to go to the second string, 10th fret in this case, third string, 9th fret, and then I bend up the 9th fret while leaving the 10th fret where it's at. It's very Rolling Stones, isn't it? So for the D, that's what I would do. When we go up to E, I would simply move that up two frets. Isn't that huge? Just two notes. One thing Jake does great is he's doing pull-offs to open strings quite a bit. And in one particular song, it's actually supposed to be capoed, but I'll just do it in open here. He goes. Something similar to that. It reminded me a lot of when I played country and I'd be doing a lot of open string pull-offs as well. That kind of thing. So I'm kind of used to it. But he does this really interesting thing at the end of a song where it sounds like he's going. So a really cool thing that you can implement right away in your lead playing is just try pulling out to open strings. Now in other videos I talked about staccato bends and usually it's when they're already bent and you're just coming down. So like... But Jake does it on the way up in a few solos and I love the way that sounds. So instead you just go... People usually put licks and riffs in different categories, but Jake does a great job of mixing them together. And here's an example of using what usually would be a lick in an actual riff situation. So what I like is you might come up with a really sweet lick and it might not work in a solo situation, but you might be able to turn it into a killer riff. You never know. One technique that seems to be universal in all these artist series is the unison bend. So. That sound. Now Jake does a few variations on the unison bends and I have to show you because they're really killer. So one time he goes like this. Isn't that crazy? I call them hyper unison bends because we're basically just doing a unison bend, but at the top of it, we're going crazy. The first time I got real excited about playing third intervals on two strings at a time was when I played Orion by Metallica. I've always been in love with that sound. So the way Jake uses them in a solo is he slides around. And what I like is the sliding third concept. It's very melodic and it takes up a lot of space, which I love. And it's very important when you're the only guitar player. I was listening to Brave New World and all of a sudden I hear like this percussive sound happening and I couldn't tell if it was him doing it or the bass player. So I watched a video and I watched his hand and he's basically just kind of playing drums on the strings for part of the riff. I kind of do something like that, but I do more harmonics when I do the percussive part. This 
This next technique completely blew my mind because I love chaotic lead guitar. And like I said before, we always seem to have unison bends going on. So in this particular case, he's doing unison bends, but all of a sudden he does this chaotic climb. It's just like... I'm definitely gonna be stealing that from you, Jake. I hope you don't mind. Their newest album, The Battle at Garden Skate, has so many great songs, so I highly recommend checking out this album. It's one of those albums that I want to listen to over and over again because I keep hearing new things. And something I heard the other day was this really cool high percussive lead part. And I was like, what, what, what's doing that? It's kind of strange sounding. <laughs> That's not exactly what he plays. I was just trying to add that little high percussive part in between some licks. And uh, it's actually pretty difficult to do, but it really sounds cool. Out of all the solos I've ever heard him play in the song, The Weight of Dreams, I think you should check that out for sure. Uh, the solo was just epic. And here are some of the techniques that I really love that he did in the solo. The first one is what I call nervous vibrato. Now he uses it a lot with bends and it gives it a lot of feel. That's just where you shake it really fast as you bend it. <laughs> Crazy sound, huh? A very interesting sound you can get that a lot of people neglect for some reason is if, let's say, you're in A minor pentatonic. This minor six doesn't get a lot of love. So let's try this. Let's go to the minor six interval and we're gonna bend it up a whole step. So we get this sound. So typically people play around it. But throw it in and it'll catch some ears. Now like any great guitar player, they always have their certain motifs and circular patterns. And I'm a huge fan of circular patterns and I have my own way of kind of picking them using economy picking. And Jake seems to go to these particular motifs quite a bit and they sound great. <laughs> So we're just here in A minor pentatonic. Also, if you move it up higher, we can do stuff like this. You could take out a note and get this. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the artist series for Jake Kiska from Greta Van Fleet. I know his playing continues to influence a lot of my students as well as myself. And I hope this gets you excited about his playing, his techniques, and uh, maybe checking out more of the band. And if you have any more suggestions about other artist series you'd like to see, go ahead and put those in the comments. All right, everyone, we'll catch you at the next lesson. We'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.